All right, welcome back. Last time when we were uh, looking at carbon-based molecules, as you know, dogs, they need a lot of protein in their diet. And that's one of the carbon molecules that we're going to be talking about today. Okay. Now, as I had mentioned before, carbon-based molecules are the foundation, I like to use the word backbone of life because the molecules that we're looking at uh, in this segment are primarily made out of carbon. They use carbon as uh, a backbone of their structures. Today, right now, we're going to focus on lipids. Now, if you remember, um, another word for a lipid is a fat. And these, as you can see, are nonpolar molecules. In other words, the electrons and other charges are evenly distributed across these molecules. Uh, and so that's why they don't dissolve well in water. And their structure is uh, made up of long fatty acid chains that you can see here. Every time you see a line change direction like this, that's going to represent a, not only a carbon atom, but also there's going to be hydrogen loaded along this backbone. So these are very long fatty acid chains, nonpolar. The hydrogen is distributed evenly across these chains. And that's going to store tremendous amounts of energy wherever you see a bond here, particularly between the carbon and the hydrogen atoms. These bonds are going to be high energy bonds. And so lipids are going to store tremendous amounts of energy. Okay. Now, where you see this word glycerol here, uh, that's actually the, the backbone of this molecule right here, um, linked in like the backbone, okay? And they serve several functions in the body. As I mentioned before, because of all those bonds and because just the sheer size of these molecules, they store tremendous amounts of energy, three times that of proteins, three times that of carbohydrates. They also serve a very important function in the cell membrane. As you can see here, uh, every one of these red molecules that you see in the cell membrane is a phospholipid. And, and of course, you can see the, the long fatty acid tails uh, that they have. We'll come back to that shortly. Many hormones are also made up of lipids as well. And as you know, hormones are those molecules that are used to communicate information throughout the body. And it's part of the, the control and feedback system maintaining homeostasis. When we refer to a saturated fatty acid, this word saturated means that it's loaded up with hydrogen. And you can see that in the diagram there. Those that are unsaturated, like you would find in peanuts or in safflower oil or canola oil, these have a lot of unsaturated fatty acids. We, we typically find them more in plant oils and coconut oil, that kind of thing, because instead of being loaded up with hydrogen, you're going to see more double bonds along that backbone uh, with carbon. Now back to phospholipids that make up the, the membranes. There is a phosphate head that has a charge on it. So that's going to be polar. And then the tails themselves, as you can see, are nonpolar. Negatively charged phosphate ion at the top. And all of this is loaded with hydrogen, evenly distributed across here. So there's no uh, net charge on that side of the molecule. So this side of the molecule is going to be what we refer to as, as hydro phobic. You've ever heard of phobia before? Fear? Uh, this side of the molecule we refer to as hydrophilic. City of brotherly love is Philadelphia, right? So this is a water loving side of the molecule. This is a water fearing side of the molecule. And so the heads of phosphate, of phospholipids are going to be pointing in the direction of the water. And as a result, when you go back and look at that cell membrane diagram, these tails are pointing inward. And, and so water and water soluble materials are not going to easily go across the cell membrane as a result of these neat little molecules. Moving on to proteins, as we mentioned before, do you remember the word polymer we mentioned last time and monomer? Polymers are large molecules. 
that are consisting of many repeating smaller molecules referred to as monomers. Remember, mono means one, poly means many. Now, in living things, there are 20 different amino acids that are used to build proteins in organisms. There's actually more than that, but these are the ones that are essential to life. And they come together in proteins similar to way that letters come together to form words and then words forming sentences. Uh, so there's a tremendous amount of information uh, that's in here. What you see in the, in the bottom diagram here is a typical amino acid that has a, um, our carboxylic side over here on the left, carboxylic, and over here is the amine side of the molecule. And these are going to link together in a process that you may already be aware of known as dehydration synthesis. Okay, dehydration synthesis. Make sure you write that down. Basically, we have to remove water in order to build a protein. Dehydration means to remove water. Synthesis means to build a larger molecule from smaller molecules. So we'll see that here. We have the side chains that are going to vary. Some of these are going to be polar. So some amino acids will have a charge on that, on that side chain. And of course, there's others that are nonpolar. And when the bond is formed through dehydration synthesis, that's referred to as a peptide bond. Okay, and we can see them pictured here. So in order for this peptide bond to be produced, joining this amino acid to that amino acid, we had to remove a hydrogen atom from one side. Um, in this case, it was the amine attached to the nitrogen. And then an OH off of the carboxylic side of this amino acid here. Uh, and in the process, that peptide bond is formed. And of course, again, it occurs on this side of the amino acid as well. So what you see here resulted in two water molecules being formed in the process of making these peptide bonds. Now, we'll get into the mechanism of how that actually occurs in living things uh, in a future program. And proteins, as you can see, just like letters in a word and words in a sentence, Proteins are going to differ in the number and the order of amino acids the same way letters are in words and words in sentences. And they're going to interact with one another as that protein is going to fold up and make a unique shape. It could be a structural component in the cell or it could be another kind of molecule that controls chemical reactions. And in proteins, it's always about shape. The shape of the, of the protein determines its function. And there are literally thousands of different proteins that are in your body right now. Some of them are structural components. Some of them are doing jobs like managing chemical reactions. And here is a, a diagram of a relatively large protein known as hemoglobin. And as you know, that carries oxygen throughout the blood in your red blood cells. The structures that you see here are, are folds of proteins upon folds of proteins. And they're all held together by what we learned previously are hydrogen bonds. And so we may have on this amino acid represented by the blue dot, an amino acid that has a slight positive charge over here that's going to be attracted to another amino acid in the chain that has a slight negative charge and of course we get that that attraction that weak attraction that we have referred to as hydrogen bonds previously and that holds the protein giving it its particular shape again shape is everything in proteins and so if the amino acids for some reason are out of sequence, that's going to alter the shape and therefore the function of the protein. Sometimes a protein may still function if an amino if one particular amino acid is wrong, other times the protein will completely unfold or never come together in the first place. And so you can see again these kinds of structures here, the sequence of those amino acids is critical to the function and the shape of that protein.
And then moving on finally to nucleic acids. Again, these are also polymers, but this time the monomer is a different kind of molecule known as a nucleotide, all right? And, and here we have examples of nucleotides that are put together to make DNA. What I've circled there is the nucleotide thymine, and what typically is going to bond to that is another amino acid here, excuse me, another nucleic acid that we refer to as adenine. And the reason why they're found together always is because of these particular attractions that you see on the nitrogen base. Again, a hydrogen bond is produced, not because water is here, but because we have opposite charges in complementary sides of these molecules. And of course, you're going to see it down below with guanine and cytosine and the reverse of that down at the bottom of the illustration. So nucleic acids are very large molecules. They are very information-rich molecules, and that's what their function is. The specific sequence of these nucleotides is going to determine the information that's stored on the inside of these, of these rungs here. Every nucleotide is made up of three components, a phosphate group represented by the blue circle, a four carbon sugar known as deoxyribose at the bottom of the screen, and then some kind of nitrogen base. We mentioned that could be adenine, thymine, cytosine, or guanine. We, knew, we normally represent those nucleotide bases by just using these four letters. And as I mentioned before, DNA is information rich. That's its function. It stores information. All the in information in your body that was inherited from your parents is found on the rungs of these molecules. Now we'll get into the, the function of RNA later on, but for right now, I want you to be aware that RNA is essential in providing the directions for each individual protein that we referred to a moment ago, all right? Some of this information is gonna get copied from DNA to RNA, and that will be later converted into a protein within the cytoplasm of the cell. And you can see that process just basically shown at the bottom of the screen next to me, okay? So in a nutshell, we've looked at carbohydrates, we've looked at lipids, the energy storage molecules in the body. We've looked at proteins, which are used for structure and managing cell functions. And then finally, we've looked here at, at nucleic acid, which stores all the information that's in your body or the vast majority of the information that's in your body. Great. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.